Coming up today, GCN kit, Terreno Adriatico, a Paris-Nice wrap-up, and your cycling questions answered. Welcome to the GCN News Show. It's happened. After over a year of demand, we are going to be selling our exclusive GCN cycling kit. And we want to know what cut of kit you would like. Would you like the racing cut, as modelled by yours truly, or would you prefer a more standard cut? Head over to our Facebook page to register your preferences and your interest in the kit. Be quick, because stocks are sure to go fast. After five stages of the Terreno Adriatico, Alberto Contador has taken two stage wins and is back in the leader's jersey of a World Tour race. After a barren year by his own high standards last year, Contador attacked on the penultimate climb of the Paso Lanciano on stage five, dropping the other GC favourites and catching the remnants of the day's breakaway to take his second stage win of the race. Our Polish viewers will be pleased to learn that we have been working on our pronunciation this week. However, I'm sure I will probably still get it wrong. Michał Kwiatkowski fell out of the blue leader's jersey after Contador's long-range attack on stage five. But after such an explosive start to the year, we're sure that he'll continue to win and show his form in even bigger races to come. Rewinding from Contador's dramatic stage five attack, Terreno Adriatico began with a team time trial that was taken by Omega Pharma Quickstep. Stage two saw Italian sprinter Matteo Pellucci of IAM or I Am Cycling take a chaotic bunt sprint. This stage also saw Marcel Kittel fall out with his bike. It's okay though, because he apologized the next day with this tweet. Tried to keep our relationship going after our fight yesterday. Apologized to my sweetheart this morning. Hashtag giant love. Following the chaos of stage two, Peter Sagan powered to the win from a rather smaller bunch on stage three to Arezzo. So far at Terreno, Contador's form is looking ominous for the rest of the GC favourites for the rest of the year. Comment and let us know your thoughts. Will we be seeing Alberto Contador in yellow on the Champs-Élysées? <laughs> Staying with Terreno, it's this week's caption competition. We want your help with this photo of Fabian Cancellara and a friend on the Muro de Guardia Grelli, a brutal climb that reaches pitches of up to 30%. Leave your captions in the comments below. With no time trial or mountain top finish, it was one of the most open editions of Paris Nice in years. Tom Yelter Slagter of Garmin Sharp looked to be among the favourites early on after his win on stage four. He dropped out of the overall contention, however, after a mechanical on stage six, but bounced back to win on stage seven. The Race of the Sun concluded with a tough final stage, which started and finished in Nice. French champion Arthur Vichot claimed a win on home soil, while French team Ajay Dozer had a win in the overall and two stage wins. Despite reputedly being five kilos overweight, Carlos Bettencourt looked easy in the yellow jersey and won overall, having won back to back on stages five and six. World champion Rui Costa was second overall despite racing in white shorts, and French champion Vichot took third. We've already mentioned the brutal finish to stage five of Terreno Adriatico. The Muro di Guardia Grelli saw riders face slopes of up to 30% on the climb to the finish. How do they get around this? By fitting compact gears, some even as low as 36, 32. If you've already fitted a compact and you want some more tips on riding up steep climbs, check out our link in the description below, or even better, watch this video until the very end when we will have a link for you. Things are back to normal at the GCN Strava Club. Cycle Doctor 1 took the longest total distance, while Mario Fonseca clocked the longest ride. For the climbing, Arnas Pelletas took that with 13,200 metres. Strava Club's resident pro, Jack Haig, clocked 11 rides and 817 kilometres, but this week's winner is Jonathan Licksteiner, who rode 20 times this week. Jonathan, we think that's a fantastic effort. Get in touch and we'll send you a prize. This week, GCN are going to Mallorca, and when we're not lounging by the pool working on a much needed tan, we are going to be filming some videos. What would you like to see? Let us know in the comments below, and if we like your suggestion, you could well see your idea made into a GCN video. We asked you to tweet in your cycling related questions, so I am going to do my best to answer a couple of them. Ian Appleby tweeted and asked us about the performance and fashion benefits of beards. On the performance side, Ian, we're really not sure. It's something we'd have to experiment with. However, as no GCN presenter is currently able to grow a beard, it could be something that we're waiting a couple of years for. Ben Nicholson tweeted and asked, when will Matt Stevens ever get a haircut? Well, Ben, you've clearly missed out on some of our earlier comments because Matt doesn't have a haircut, it's a wig. 
Don't put that in. Oh, no. We're going to finish up with Tweet of the Week. While Team Tinkoff Saxo were sipping champagne to toast Alberto Contador's second consecutive stage win and leader's jersey at Tirreno, Oleg Tinkoff suggested something rather stronger and more Russian. Stephen de Jong, champagne at Tinkoff Saxo. Oleg Tinkoff, I go for vodka. Thanks for watching and don't forget to share, subscribe, like, follow and watch as much as you can this week. We'll see you next week from Poolside in Mallorca. We have been working on our pronunciation this week. Michal Kwiatkowski. Michal Kwiatkowski. On the Muro di... What the fuck's it called? Guardiagreli. On the Muro di Guardiagreli. On the Muro di Guardiagreli. Guardiagreli. On the Muro di Guardiagreli. Guardiagreli. I can't... I've been going through that this morning as well. I still can't fucking say it. Click here for more information on what's been in this news show. And if you'd like great cycling content for free, click this ugly mug.